Welcome to Nelf's Nonsense. Take a look at this graphic from chess.com. It shows the number of chess grandmasters by country. In 2021, Russia is dominating the world with 240 grandmasters. The next highest country is the United States, which has a bigger population than Russia, and then Germany coming in third, a close third. Good for Germany. I'm a big fan of chess. I was taught chess by my uncle when I was like six years old. My family likes to play chess. I play with my brothers. We all get really mad at each other if we lose. It gets pretty competitive. So I'm a big chess fan. Now, I've been curious as to why people from Russia seem to dominate the sport. You go back to the Cold War times, there was the legendary chess match between Bobby Fischer, an American, and Boris Spassky, a Russian, took place in Iceland. Bobby Fischer ended up winning. It was a huge deal, it had big implications for the Cold War. It's interesting because it showed sort of the dynamics of the sports or game, whatever you wanna call it. Bobby Fischer came with, I think, one advisor, whereas Boris Spassky basically had a whole team of Soviet chess advisors. And this is because the Soviet Union put a lot of money and resources into developing their chess talent. Now, before the Russian Revolution of 1917, chess was sort of seen as a game for the rich elite people. But during the Russian Revolution, there was actually a slogan that said, bring chess to the masses. And after the Russian Revolution, this happened. Chess became extremely popular throughout the country. After the Russian Revolution, this guy, Nikolai Krylenko, who was at one point the supreme commander of the Soviet Union, paved the way for chess in the country. Chess became something that was widely spread. Almost every Soviet household had a chess board. Children were taught the game from a very young age, from like age four. They had it in school. And there was a big emphasis put on the game and a lot of prestige put on people who were good at chess. So a lot of people in the Soviet Union times lived in poverty and chess was a pretty reliable and cheap form of entertainment. Widely accessible, pretty cheap, you could play it anywhere. A lot of people playing chess. Now, according to my research, there's a few reasons why the Soviet Union pushed chess on its people so much. One of the interesting justifications comes from this guy, Krylenko, when he said, we must finish once and for all with the neutrality of chess. We must condemn once and for all the formula chess for the sake of chess, like the formula art for the sake of art. We must organize shock brigades of chess players and begin immediate realization of the five-year plan for chess. So there was actually a political motivation uh, for this promotion of chess. They wanted to thrust this game of logic and strategy upon the people and sort of pull them away. They had a big anti-religious movement and they wanted to pull them away from the Russian Orthodox Church. And so that's a reason for why chess was so thrust upon the population. According to British Grandmaster Daniel King, Krylenko's work promoting chess was an extension of his role in the Soviet anti-religious campaigns. The Bolsheviks' motives for promoting chess were both ideological and political. They hoped that this logical and rational game might wean the masses away from the belief in the Russian Orthodox Church. But they also wanted to prove the intellectual superiority of the Soviet people over the capitalist nations. Put simply, it was part of world domination. That's why it was such a big deal when Bobby Fischer beat Boris Spassky, because it's like all of these resources, money, time, people, manpower going into developing the best chess minds in the world. And it's beat by this crazy, weird, recluse American guy who has no team and uh, just kind of shows up and he wins. So it was a big hit to the Soviet Union's chess ego. So all of these foundations that were laid in the Soviet Union basically paved the way for Russian people today to still be pretty dominant at chess. And even when you look at some of the other grandmasters, uh, there's a good amount, especially per capita, of people from countries that were former Soviet nations. Thank you for listening to my nonsense.